Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to work on the Epiphone SG standard that we've reviewed in the past. Now, when I got the Gibson Firebird Zero, I compared it to this guitar and said that the pickups in this guitar sounded shrill, sounded a little lacking in punch, and etc. So what I went ahead and did was I ordered some Alnico Pro Buckers by Epiphone with a push-pull pot wiring harness. It's the solderless style. Today we're going to install those in this guitar and we're going to put the pickups that are in this guitar with the existing wiring harness into the Les Paul 100. So this is going to be a pretty interesting one today. Let's take a look at the parts that I received in the mail today. So let's get right down to it. Right here we've got some Pro Bucker by Epiphone vintage humbucking pickups. These are purportedly brand new. If you look at the back, we've got some solderless connectors here. That'll make this the easiest pickup install I've ever done. And future pickup installs in this guitar should be equally as easy. It came with this wiring harness. This wiring harness includes push-pull volume pots. Comes with everything. Comes with the jack, which says Epiphone on it. Um, an input jack, sorry, a switch that says Epiphone on it. Input jack that also says Epiphone on it. Two full-size tone pots, and the whole thing is solderless. So these two things together can be had for less than $50 right now on eBay. And it's interesting because a lot of these are coming from China, so you have to wait forever for them. These came from uh, Hebron, Kentucky. So it looks like somebody's either drop shipping them or they have a warehouse in Kentucky. I expect that these are real, and I think what happens is that Epiphone either overproduces these, and these are meant to go in like the custom pros, um, and then these, you know, get sold wholesale to these companies that are selling them in China where the factories are, or this is a situation of backdoor where these kind of go out the back door, uh, so to speak. That happens a lot. I think they're genuine because there's too many details about them um, that would be hard to replicate and wouldn't be worth replicating for knockoffs for as cheap as they're selling them for. For example, Epiphone is stamped on the switch. Uh, Epiphone is also on the input jack, which we'll look at when I install it. But And it's not just the word Epiphone on the input jack, it's actually the stylized Epiphone font. Here you've got the plastic on the front of these pickups, they're very heavy. And on the back you can see Epiphone is stamped, designed by Epiphone, it has the same part numbers and everything. So. I think these are genuine, I really do. I think we'll know when we install them. Um, and then the other thing I got, I got some new knobs. So the knobs that came on the SG when it came to me, since I got it second hand, they were not the stock knobs, they were some off-brand knobs, probably these, because they look the same, but they're the wrong color, they're gold. Well, I want it to be like original, so black with silver reflector tops. Unfortunately, the Gibson ones are usually $19.99, but they're out of stock everywhere, and now they're selling for $60 to $80 on eBay. I simply refuse to pay that much at this point. When they're back in stock, I'll order them for $19.99, but for now, these Dopro ones will have to do the trick, and I think it'll get close enough for now. So, let's get the SG up on the bench, take a look inside there, and see what we need to remove to install this new kit. Alrighty, the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of these horrid knobs. So let's do that. That well, this is the one. Oh, actually, all of them. They just kind of pop off. Look at that. Boom. This one's the one that was broken. This one doesn't want to come off. I believe in you. Come on. I believe in you. There we go. Those are off. They look eerily similar to these. I seriously think they might be the same. Ah, maybe not. Nah, I'm pretty sure they're the same. Oh well, at least the ones I got are the right color. These are really crappy though, so hopefully we don't have the same problem. Alright, so we got that off. Next we want to take off this switch jack. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do that. It's not a switch jack. I don't know why I called it that. Switch tip I should say. I'm just going to grab it with pliers. Turn it, you know what I mean? Well, that'll just have to stay there for right now. 
Uh, let's go ahead and uh, flip this over. We'll deal with that switch in a minute. All right, we got it flipped over. Make sure that's in the frame there. Okay, and then we're just gonna remove this. There we go. Now, let's slide this out. And now we are inside. I'm gonna readjust the camera so that it's easier to see what's going on in here, and I'll be right back with you. So if you look in here, these are four full-size CTS pots. This is also the solderless system, which is really, really cool because that means that when we put these in the Les Paul later, it'll be a lot easier to do that. So if I grab this, pull the clip, it just pulls out. There we go. That's out. And then we'll do this one. There we go. Uh, that one's out too. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to flip the guitar over and undo all the nuts that are holding all this stuff in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, flip it over, and we'll do that together. This should be relatively simple. So basically, you just unscrew everything. So that came off easy. Set that aside. Now these, I should be able to get with this tool here. So I believe these are 10 millimeters. Nope, they're not 10 millimeters. They're whatever this is. What is this? Half inch. So I'm just gonna spin all these. Very, very easy. That's an exciting thing. And jack. Here we go. So let's get all our stuff out. So let's put the jack. I have to remember where all this stuff goes when I put it on the, on the West Paul. Okay, we need this nut and washer is for a pot. This nut and washer is for a pot. This nut and washer is for a pot. This nut, this washer. For a pot. That should be it. So let's. Oh, I'm gonna try and do this so that it doesn't all fall out everywhere. Cause I don't. Oh. Here we go. All right. So I got the jack out. I got the switch out. Move the pickup cables out of the way here. I have to remember what's what. So I believe if I pull this out straight, I'll remember it goes straight down, straight back down. So I should be able to just, oh, it looks like the ground connection is, let's snip that off. There we go, got it. Now it should just lift out. We go it's out before we do this part I need to remove the strings um, because I need to pull this pick guard up and this bridge up so that I can get to these pickups so I'm gonna do that off camera you don't need to watch me take strings off so I'll do that right now okay I went ahead and got all the screws off so we should be able to just pull this up there we go Pretty simple, huh? And we're just gonna pull these connectors through the hole. There's one. That's the neck. Now, let me make sure that this is in frame. There we go, that should be in frame. So, these are labeled, neck, or are they labeled? Yeah, N and B, neck and bridge. So, it's interesting because it's almost like Fender style. You've got your pick guard and you've got your uh, pickups and you've got your springs. So I think the next thing we need to do now that we've pulled these through is to unscrew the pickups. So, let's set this down here. I think the body and pickup cavities will help catch the springs because they're gonna pop out when I unscrew these. Okay, so we got those out. Let's push this to the side for right now. Here's our springs. So it looks like the bridge springs are shorter than the neck springs. And 
All right. There you go. There's some Epiphone pickups. All right, I got it polished up a little bit, so let's open up our pickups. So uh, these, I think, are for a Les Paul, so that's going to be interesting. But um, let's pull one of these out. So these are labeled the same way, so there's an N at the end of this one and a B at the end of this one. Let's see, this one, the one that came out of it is ACPNH. B for bridge. This one is PB3NHCB. Yeah, whatever that means. So let's go ahead now and crack this open. Okay. And I don't need this pickup ring. It's going in a pick guard. Here it is, it's got a sticker that peels off. I'll peel that off later. But if it doesn't have any fingerprints on it other than the ones that I've just put on it myself. So this one is N for neck. This one is N, is N for neck right here. Let's compare them. So they look very similar. The width is about the same. I think the only difference is this one is two wire and this one is four wire. Pretty cool, huh? Let me put that back here. All right, so the next thing to do, so let me pull this out here. Let's grab our pick guard. Now there's no super easy way of doing this, so I'm gonna take my screws. Usually what I like to do is start them by hand and then screw it in the rest of the way. So being that this is not a fender, it's a little bit easier to do this because with a fender, you've got all of your pots and all of your wiring and everything uh, in your pit guard too. But with this one, you don't. So you can really manipulate it See, that's already in. I mean, this is already a lot easier than Fender style because you just, yeah, yeah you can just push it yourself. It's, it's hard to explain. If you've done something like this yourself, you know what I'm talking about. It can be pretty complicated to try to get it to stay. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, I got them both in there. So let's now take the humbucker cables, the leads, and feed them through. Got it. There we go. It's going in now. There it goes. All right. I'm going to pull the other one through and I'll be back. So we got them both in and it's time to screw the pit guard back on. So let me grab my trusty little screwdriver here. There we go. And start screwing the pit guard back in. All the screws are back in now. So we're getting there. Let's flip it upside down here. So what I've done here is, this is the bridge pickup. I wrapped it in blue tape so I'd know which is which. Okay, and then this is the ground cable I'm gonna have to solder. Okay, so the next part is let's get the electronics out and uh, let's put them in place. Okay, I got the bag open. I'm gonna get these out very carefully because I don't wanna break the solder. They should all be connected to each other. So this is the switch. Let me set this down. This is the switch. And I believe it goes... Let's see. I believe it goes like this. So, let's put that in. 
Okay, that's kind of in there. Okay. Now, let's grab these. So I'm going to do, because of these, these cables are so stiff, I'm just going to do these one at a time. So I'm going to stop the camera now and do one, these one at a time. Okay. To start with, I got the jack and the switch finger tight. And then I positioned all of the pots where they go. So let's get out our washers and nuts. So first, let's uh, take this here. And you can't see it, but what I'm doing is I'm just feeling it here, and then I'm just using my hand and just kind of finger tightening it on. So, and that just enough that it stays and doesn't fall off. I'll tighten them all super tight once I va validate that they're all in the right spot. Okay, there's one. Now, interestingly, these pots say made in Korea. So I wonder if these pots are from an older run of Epiphone, because I do know that push pulls have existed in the Epiphone world for a long time, but now all their guitars are marketed as having CTS pots, which are American. So the fact that these are not is interesting. Tells me that they're probably older, which could be why I was able to get them in the first place. Alright, so we've got this stupidly long cable here for the three-way switch. So let's snap that in, okay? Then you've got your pickups. So, so this one right here is, is the neck. So let me grab the tape. And the good thing is, if I end up doing this backwards... It's super easy to just unplug it and do it over. So, let me take a look here where the pins are. And I should be able to just pop it in. There you go. Bam. It's in there. Be careful because I don't want to bend any pins. I don't want to mess anything up. There we go. And snap it. There we go. Alright, I think everything is connected. The only thing that's not connected at this point is the ground. So, let's make sure everything's in there. Let me pull this out. There we go. And obviously everything's really loose because we only did these finger loose because we just wanted to make sure that we could get them on there. So I might as well tighten them a little bit more by hand. And here's our jack. Yeah, everything looks right to me. That looks great. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, solder the ground. Actually, before I do that, this should work without a ground. Work. We just want to make sure that it works and that the tap test is a success. It's going to sound awful because it's not grounded, but we should at least be able to uh, test it. So let's do that. Okay, it's time for the tap test. So the way this works is we turn the amp on. We change all the different switch positions and just make sure everything works. So we'll start in trouble. I hear that, do you? Rhythm. I hear that. There you go. Nothing there. Nothing there. Both. Volume. Volume. Tone. tone. Push, pull. Push, pull. Perfect. Everything works. So let's get that ground connection soldered. Okay, so we got that done. The soldering worked. Everything's in there. I kind of wrapped all this stuff around so 
Now we're ready to put the cover back on. There we go. So we'll grab our screwdriver. Now one of the screws got knocked in the floor. Thankfully they sent me new ones. Uh, right here. So I'm going to grab one of these screws. I'm going to finish this up. Now I can go through here and tighten all of these. So let's do that right now. I was waiting because I wanted to make sure that everything fit and that everything worked before I tightened it. So interestingly, these appear to be 12 millimeters and the ones that came off of it were half inch so it's interesting that these are metric and the other ones were imperial which kind of makes sense this is supposed to be inspired by Gibson I believe Gibson uses imperial being an American brand and all. That's pretty tight in there. Okay. And last, let's tighten the jack. There we go. Okay. Tighten the switch. Okay, I think everything's good. Let's do the tap test again now that we've got it grounded. So I'm gonna grab my cable. Turn on the amp. Trouble. Rhythm. Both. Tone. Volume. Volume, tone, push pull, push pull. Okay. I think we're good. Notice the buzzing doesn't go away when I touch something. That means that it is grounded properly. Um, and the reason it's buzzing, by the way, is because there is a fluorescent light right above us. So, perfect. Let me get this strung up. Oh, one more thing. Before I do that, let's put the knobs on. I'm going to turn the amp off, get the cable out of the way, we'll put the knobs on. Let's get the knobs on. What's funny is, the reason I think that the other guy... By the way, here's the other knobs... I think they're the exact same. But anyway, I think that the reason that these were broken is these were designed for metric, and I believe what I pulled off are imperial. So these should fit a little better. So volume. Get my hand under there. Okay, volume. Tone. Now different people like to do this different ways, but I like to see the number when I look down. All right, would you look at that? That looks so much better than it did. That's great. I think the switch tip is supposed to be this gold color that, that's on there, but that's okay. I think I'll leave it black. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's get it strung up and see how it sounds.
I got halfway through stringing this up and I realized we didn't do the most exciting part of this. We need to peel off this plastic. So let's do it. Oh, look at how clean that is. Woo wee, I love it. Yeah, love it. All right, ProBucker stickers are off, so I'm gonna finish stringing it up now. Okay, so here it is. Let's see what we got. I'm really excited. Sounds better than the old pickups to me. I did record some of the old pickups before I did all of this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a back-to-back -back old pickups, new pickups. Same signal chain, same everything. Same amp, same settings, same volumes, same everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, roll that tape now. <laughs> see it was relatively simple to do the hardest part was getting the uh, pickup feed through that hole because they're the connectors are a little bigger than the old connectors other than that it was a relatively simple and straightforward process and I'm really really happy with how it turned out I love having coil splitting on this guitar I love coil splitting in general but yeah and the new knobs and everything else is just it's fantastic so I know I said that we were going to put the old pickups into the Les Paul 100, and we're still going to do that. 
but we'll do that in a separate video. I feel like I've taken up enough of your time with this Epiphone SG today. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you. Please join the Discord if you want to discuss guitars, gears, and gear, and more. And please like and please subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thank you.